Hello. In this video, we're going to talk about classifying and storing data. So let's start off by defining the term data set. A data set is a collection of data. So that kind of makes sense, right? So if you've got a bunch of data, then it forms a data set. However, what's interesting is that we sometimes refer to a data set as a sample. Why? Why would we use the term sample? Well, the reason is, is that a sample is typically part of a larger whole. So that larger whole we call the population. Okay, so let's just highlight those, right? So we've got data set, sample, and then population. So uh, let's discuss that for a second, right? So the idea is, let's say you went through and you collected uh, some data from your classmates. So you went up, you went around and you, you collected their height and their weight. So you collected some their physical attributes. So uh, once you collected all that data, we would say that that all put together that that is a data set. Uh, and we would also say that uh, as far as if you were to go through and study it, uh, it is a sample, right? The results that you'd get from that would be a sample as part of a larger whole of all human beings, the height and weight of all human beings. So all the all human beings in this case would be the population, right? So the sample would be the height and weight of your class, and then the population would be all human beings, okay? Um, and the data set could be really large and still you know, not be all, not be the population, right? So you could take the the data set could be the height and weight of everyone in North America, um, and that still would be a sample from the larger population of all people on Earth. Okay, so hopefully that gives you some idea. Um, another example, just to make one up on the spot, could be you could look at you could look at Hondas, and let's say you were you know studying their gas mileage. Okay, so you go through and you collect a bunch of data on Hondas. Uh, if, if you're talking about cars and, well, first actually, Hondas co could be the population uh, if you were to go through and pick a subset of Hondas uh, and call that the sample, right? So if you were to go through and collect the data on Honda Accords, then Hon Hon all Hondas would be the population. But what I was thinking of when I started to make up the example was that uh, if you used all cars, then if you had the gas mileage of Hondas, that would be the sample, and then all cars would be the population. Okay, so that's the idea of the difference between the two. So typically, when you're going through and you're studying statistics, you're working with a sample. It's unusual, actually, for you to have all of the population uh, in, your, in, in your study. Okay, so, so sometimes data sets are the population. But not usually. Okay, so next let's go through and define. Another term, so data sets typically consist of characteristics.
of people or things. So in the examples that we just used, in the first case, if you were to look at the height and weight of your classmates, then those are characteristics of your classmates, right? They're attributes uh, of, you know, the, the, of their physical attributes, uh, the representations of their physical attributes. Uh, the example that we used for cars, the characteristics, the gas mileage of a car uh, is a characteristic of the car, All right? So the term that we're gonna use for these characteristics are variables. So this is a different use for the term variable than say in an algebra course. In an algebra course, a variable is an unknown that you're solving for. Uh, in a statistics class, a variable is a characteristic uh, you know, of your data set. Okay, so let's actually go to the next page here. So we're gonna discuss two types of variables. So we're going to look at numerical variables so numerical variable describes a quantity of something that's related to uh, to the object that you're looking at actually let's do this So the key connection there is that numerical and quantity go together. So uh, for the example that we've discussed, the height and weight would both be numerical variables. They represent a quantity related to the object or thing that's in your study. So let's put this in the data. Uh, and then the second type is a categorical variable. represents a quality. Quality, so what could that mean? Um, if we go back to the examples that we've come up with so far, the way that you could go through and have a categorical variable in the height and weight example is if you were to go through and define people to be male or female, uh, that would be a quality about the person. Um, basically, it's, some, it's something that's not a quantity, right? So if, you weren't, if you're not counting up or measuring how many, uh, then it's going to be a quality. Uh, it's an aspect of who the person is. Um, and so you wouldn't say that, uh, that, that, uh, male or female, um, you know, you wouldn't say that that is a, uh, you wouldn't say that's a quantity, like how much of that is, you'd say that's an, it's a quality about them. Um, the example for cars, the Honda, uh, Honda being a Honda is a quality of being a car. It's not a quantity of being a car. Okay. And so that's the difference between numerical and categorical variables, numerical, you count up how many of them there are. Uh, or you measure how, how, how large they are. So it's a, it's a number, okay? So that's the kind of the, the, 
the note here is that this is typically a number. And we're going to talk about an exception to that in a minute. And then these are typically words. Okay, so typically, right? So uh, it's not no hard and fast rule here. Uh, you know, so that's the difference between the two: numerical quantity numbers, categorical quality words. Okay, so let's look at uh, let's look at an example. Okay, so we have, uh, we're looking at the top example here. We're gonna look at the bottom in a minute. Uh, but we're looking at the top example. So what we've got is we've got a data set. Okay, so this is a bunch of data that's collected and it's a data set. Um, it's, got, uh, it's got a bunch of variables here, right? We've got make, model, number of doors, weight, uh, and then the number of head injuries. So this, is, this data comes from crash test results. Okay, um, so it was collected by someone who was going through and doing crash tests, uh, and then they just kind of compiled all of the data and put it into this uh, into this data set. Okay, so uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go through and we're going to look at the variables, you know, and each each uh, column is a variable. We're going to look at the variables and we're just going to identify them. Are they uh, are they numerical or are they categorical? So. The make we've already talked about, mentioned Honda a minute ago, uh, that's clearly a categorical variable. You wouldn't say, you know, how many makes there are. Well, I guess you could say that for all of it, for the data set, but in terms of a car, you wouldn't say how many makes it has. Uh, it has one make. Uh, so that's a, a, a quality about the car is its make. Okay, so let's see, is this working? Nope, hold on. Okay, so this is, Categorical, all right, and then the model. If you take a look at these, these are clearly words. You can't have more than one model. A model is an aspect of the car. It's a it's a it's a quality of the car, and so we would also say that's categorical. And then the number of doors. The number of doors is something that you would count up. You could go around the car and say, well, it's got you know a uh, driver side door, passenger side door, um, and so it's that's a two door. You know, there's no there's no uh, there's no rear doors. Um, and then you can also have four doors where you've got doors, you know, for passengers, you know, in the back. Okay. And so since this is a count, something you could count up how many doors there are, we would say that this is numerical. Okay. And then the weight. So that is something you'd measure. Uh, things that you'd measure are going to be numerical. And then head injuries, that's also some, that's something that you would count. You'd count up how many head injuries there are for the vehicle. Uh, and so if you're measuring or counting up something, that's also going to be numerical. Okay, uh, so that's our, that gives us an example that we can use to go through and think about the difference between categorical and numerical. Okay, so let's talk about that exception that I mentioned just a moment ago. All right, so categorical variables can be represented with numbers. Just to make it confusing, because everything has to be confusing. Okay. When this is done, this is called coding. All right, and so while there might be different types of coding, we're going to look at one in particular uh, today, and that is going to be um, where you go through and you have like true or false for a category. Uh, right where there's two different types of things for a category, and we're going to use one for true uh, or zero for false. Okay, so if you've got two possibilities for a categorical variable, And you, what you can do is you can go through and you can define you can define the category with one of the two. And 
then use one for true or zero or false when you're going through and you're filling out the, the data, right? The, the, um, the table. Okay, so uh, I'll show you what I mean by that because that maybe it's not obvious just by seeing the words here, but uh, once you see it in action, it will make sense. Let's go back to our crash test example. So this time now we are looking at the bottom, um, the bottom table. Okay, so the bottom data set. So this data set represents, uh, you know, some information on, this is actually information on uh, children that are born, babies that are born. This is how much they weigh. Uh, this is, I believe this is actually the, um, the sex of the child, right? So, um, and as you can see, we've got female here at the top. Okay, so what that's saying is that's saying that uh, the numbers here below are relative to being female. Okay, and then this last smoke is not that the children smoke, it's whether the parent smokes, okay, and whether the mother smoked. Okay, so if we go through and look at these, we've got coding actually for two different things, right? Both of these have been, you know, have been coded. Okay, uh, and so this first one is relative to female. Okay, so what, and what we can do to go through and interpret that uh, is you just look down the column and if you have a one, then that means true. And if you have a zero, then that means false. So the first child, which I kind of covered over a little bit accidentally here, there's a one there. So that means the first child was female. All right, the second child has a zero. So that means the second child was male, right? So. Uh, true or false. So it's, you've got true for the one, uh, false for the zero. Okay. And then the rest of the children all have ones. So they are all female. Okay. So now let's go through and look at the second column here, which is talking about whether the mother smoked or not. All right. So the first has a zero. That means false. Okay. Um, and so since that's got, uh, since that, since got, that's got false, that means that the mother did not smoke. The second has a one. That means true. So that means that the, this child, uh, the mother did smoke. Um, and then we've got zeros for the rest. Uh, that means the rest of the children's mothers uh, did not smoke. So a good question is, could I go through and instead of having female here at the top, could I go through and put male? Absolutely. Okay, absolutely you could. If you put male here, then you would just wanna reverse all of these numbers. So if it's male and the first child is female, then you'd want to put a zero because zero represents false, right? So if you had male, then you'd have a zero here, a one here, and then zeros for the rest. Okay, so you just would code it. You, so you code it relative to the column heading, okay? Uh, and again, one for true, zero for false. And then the instead of smoke, we could have didn't smoke. Uh, and then if you did that, you'd want to reverse all these, right? So since the first... Uh, child's mother did not smoke, you'd want to have a one there. Since the second uh, did smoke, if the column heading is did not, then you'd want to have a zero. So it's going to be the opposite. Okay. And so you'd have a one and then a zero and then the rest would be ones if you coded it the opposite way. Okay. So that's the idea of coding. Okay. Um, and so in this case, Yes, you have numbers, but these are not numerical variables. These are still categorical variables, right? If you're talking about someone's sex, you're talking about uh, a quality about them, not a quantity about them. If you're talking about whether someone smoked or not, you're talking about a quality about them. You can't, you know, you're not, you're not adding up how many smoke. Well, I guess you could add up how many, how many cigarettes they smoke, uh, but uh, you're, you're <laughs> But yeah, you get the idea, okay? So it's a, an aspect of who they are. Uh, that's the idea of a quality about them. Uh, but you can go through and use this tricky idea of coding with ones for true and zeros for false to use numbers to represent qualities, okay? And that's the idea. All right, let's move on. All right, next page, let's talk about storing data. We've actually been looking at stored data. 
So data is typically stored in a spreadsheet like format. where each row represents an object or person in the study or in your data. And each column represents a variable. So we were just looking at some stored data. And so in the first example, we had cars, each car, uh, each type of each, each uh, row that had a, a different car type and had a different number of head injuries. Uh, that would be that would be an example of uh, of, a, of an object, a car, right, that's in the study. Uh, and then the columns, if you will recall, were different types of variables. Actually, let's just jump back rather than me referring to it. Let's just jump back, right? So this is an example. This is a, spread, this is a spreadsheet type format. If you're not familiar with spreadsheets, uh, spreadsheets have rows and columns like this. And so we would say, you know, ac the Acura Integra uh, is uh, an object or thing that's in the object or person that's in the study, a Chevrolet Camaro, uh, Ford Escort, Ford Taurus. And so each one of these rows, a row represents uh, an object that's in your study. And then as far as how you organize the characteristics of those objects, you organize the variables in columns and each column heading, okay, is a variable. Oh, actually, I was supposed to use a different example. Uh, let's, let's actually just jump over here. Okay, so let's try instead, look at this spreadsheet, um, spreadsheet type format. And so uh, this is the one I was supposed to use. Oops, all right. Um, and so you can see, what have we got here in this data set? Uh, we have movies, okay? And then we have some attributes about those movies. We have the, uh, the rating that they've gotten. Um, we have the runtime, the length, and then the critics rating uh, in terms of what critics thought of it. Okay, um, and so what we would say is we would say each row is an example movie, uh, which is an object that's in the data set, and then the columns are the characteristics, the variables. Okay, so uh, this top this top example here, this is called a stacked uh, data format. So let's just stay on this page. In my notes, I was supposed to go back, but let's just stay here. This is called a stacked data format. And so in a stacked data format, you have each piece of data is just in a single in a, in a, a single group. Okay, these are all in a single group. Each movie has a title, rating, runtime, you know, critic. If we were going to add more, we would just keep going and going and going and just making this longer and longer and longer. Okay, so we have all the movies are kind of in a single group. Okay, there is a second type of format that's called an unstacked format. And so you can kind of see the difference here in that you have the uh, the data is split up into groups, all right? So we've got two groups here. Instead of just having one big group that's just all kind of together, uh, all stacked, if you will, uh, we have two groups. Uh, and so we've got, what we've done is, is, is someone went through and took the, the movies that are rated G and put their run times. Uh, okay, I think, right? Hold on, hold on. Um, maybe, the, maybe that's not from the same data set. 
because 112, I don't see 112 in here. Um, so yeah, it doesn't look like it's from the same data set. Uh, but so we, anyway, the point is, is that we've got our rated G movies that's in one stack and our rated PG movies that are in a second stack. So we've got two stacks. And when you split up the data like this, we call that an unstacked data format uh, versus having all of the data together in one, in one group. So between these two formats, so we're just defining them, so you do need to know the difference, uh, but the vast majority of the time we are going to use this one. We very rarely will look at going through and splitting up the data into, you know, in, in, like this, the two separate columns. Oh, and that's the end of this lecture. Okay, so that covers all the topics from this section. Uh, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.